I'm Tom Steinford in Washington, D.C., where there's been the largest of an unprecedented number of nationwide protests demanding tougher gun control in the United States. What's significant and impressive about these rallies is that they've been organised and led by teenagers, including the students who last month watched their own classmates be gunned down at the Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School in Florida. Across the country, their message is simple. Enough is enough. And as you'll see, they've found an unlikely ally, a convicted school shooter who's now spending the rest of his life in prison, regretting his deadly moment of madness. Enough is enough. We say no more. They call themselves the mass shooting generation. And today, hundreds of thousands of them marched on the Capitol and right across America. I have a dream that enough is enough. This is a teenage revolution demanding the land of the free be brave enough to grasp real gun reform and stop this plague of kids killing kids. It's very rare that you get the chance to go face to face with a school shooter, but one has agreed to meet us at his prison in Alaska. Now this is coincidentally the state that has the highest rate of gun deaths in America. And it was here that a 16 year old by the name of Evan Ramsey opened fire on his classmates. Back in 1997, school shootings were barely on America's radar, let alone in the tiny Alaskan town of Bethel. But it was here that Evan Ramsey went on his deadly rampage. He's now 20 years into a 198 year prison term. Hello, it's uh, Tom Steinford from 60 Minutes Australia. He's locked up at the Wildwood Correctional Complex and has offered to give us a rare insight into what really goes through the mind of a school shooter. I guess you don't get visitors like this every day? Oh, not every day. I'm actually only his second visitor in seven years, but he slowly opens up to detail that dreadful day. I woke up at about maybe eight o'clock. Mm. Uh, got ready for the day, uh, brushed my teeth and whatnot, and I went downstairs and got the shotgun that I used in my crime and put it down my pants leg and walked to one of the uh, bus stops that I normally go to and we got on the bus went to the high school do you remember that moment you fired the first shot yes I actually after firing into uh, the crowd I fired uh, two or three shots into the ceiling and I have no idea why my initial reason for firing into a crowd is uh, there was a boy, a couple of boys actually, that I hated. I disliked them so much that I actually hated them. Did you want them dead? Yes. I would have killed them if I had the chance. And unfortunately, uh, Josh was shot and he died. And I had nothing against Josh. 15-year-old Josh Palacios was killed along with school principal Ron Edwards. And two other students were wounded. How many people did you want to kill? I'd rather not say. What is the significance of wanting to know how many people I was interested in murdering. Well, it just paints a picture of what you were hoping to achieve that day.
Ramsey's motive was simple. After a childhood of physical and sexual abuse in foster care, he was now also being relentlessly bullied and beaten at school. It started as being called names and uh, people throwing things at me and being beat up by people. I've been attacked by white students for being, I'm half white and half native. I've been attacked for being white by natives and I've been attacked by natives for being white. I've been spit on for being white. Um, and to this day, I still don't know how I was supposed to ignore somebody spitting on me or putting their hands on me. But uh, uh, I dealt with that for about a year and a half, roughly. And so I decided that I had enough of that. I decided that I was going to take the shotgun to school at that moment. Had you shot much before? No, I'd never fired before. In the 21 years since Ramsey was convicted, school shootings have become almost an epidemic in America. Highlighted yet again with the massacre of 17 students and teachers in Florida last month. You were texting your family saying your goodbyes on the day. I was telling them that I loved them and that I was scared and they were just telling me like, like that there was police outside and that they loved me too. 15-year-old Liam Kiernan thought he was going to die during Nicholas Cruz's rampage at the Stoneman Douglas High School. While he survived, his best friend Gina Montalto didn't. He now comes down to this shrine every day. We just heard screams and gunshots, and now that I look back on it, my friend was one of the first few to be killed, so I probably heard the gunshot that took her life. No school kid should ever have to go through this, should they? No. No one should ever have to look at their friend in their coffin and tell them goodbye one more time. They had, they had futures ahead of them, all of them. What do you say to all those people that oppose gun control? How could you oppose this from getting the guns out of these people's hands and making sure that 17 lives aren't taken away from us again? The latest mass school shooting here in Florida last month is sadly just a drop in the ocean of a much larger problem. In America, there is an average of nearly one school shooting every week, and across the country, an average of 30 people are murdered with a gun every single day. But despite all of this, there are many that are still adamant guns are not the problem. For Yuri Zoltzman, owning a gun is as fundamental a right as breathing. Will gun control ever happen in America? If gun control happens in America to the degree that it happened in Australia, get ready for a civil war. Because people in America will not, like Australia, give up their guns. What would you do? I will not give up my guns, and I'll tell you why. Half my relatives went up in smoke in Germany in the 1940s. Never again. So nobody's taking my gun either. And let me tell you. So it's, it's, it's literally a fight to the death. It's, it's not, not, not only for me as an American or as a Jew, but a lot of people take my position to a higher level. Lock everything. Don't stick your bum out so much. Lock everything. You comfortable? Mm -hmm. All right, let's do it. Yuri runs this gun range in Philadelphia. historic city where the Founding Fathers wrote his beloved Second Amendment, the right to bear arms, into law. Some people say that today the Second Amendment is obsolete, uh, and I tell them to just look to places like Libya or uh, Syria, 
or any other place where the government just controls people at their own will. What about places like Australia, though, that do have very tight gun control and it seems to work? From our perspective, it was an extreme move. Once the government takes your freedom, it's over. Australia, you gave up your guns. That's your problem. It's worked out pretty well for us. Not for us. We're different. That's why we're Americans and you're Australians. So you load the magazine, insert it, you can either pull back and release or just drop it with your thumb. You just got to get that slide to go home, okay? Yuri says it's impossible to compare our two countries, pointing out 50% of his clientele as single females fearful for their safety. Good. Squeeze real hard, drive it all the way out in front of you. Line up your sights, get that straight line on top, right? Women like Bettina and Alima are the target of the latest front of the gun debate the information war. Women really have an incredible role right now in the NRA. You are watching the National Rifle Association's own recently launched TV channel, featuring everything from lifestyle shows. And it's great to be able to put your own personal touch on your firearms and your accessories. To hardline battle cries. The only way we save our country and our freedom is to fight this violence of lies with the clenched fist of truth. Defend bedrock constitutional rights in the defense of liberty. Dan Bongino is, is one of I NRA TV's most firearm. prominent presenters. Why do I carry a gun? Because if someone confronts me in a gun in an incident, God forbid, given the extremely low likelihood, you're dead. It's over. Now, the only question I have for you is you want to defend yourself? What are you going to do if a bad guy shows up with a gun and sticks it in your face? What, are you going to curse at him? I mean, what are you going to do? I'm going to give him my wallet and say, there you go. Good luck to you. What if that's not enough? You can't give me a good answer as to what you would do if a guy confronts you with a gun. What? Oh, here's my wallet. What, are you going to beg? You're going to get on your knees? I'm not getting on my knees. You can get on yours, I ain't getting on mine. You rob me with a gun, we're gonna have a problem. It's mighty tough talk, but Dan can definitely back it up. He was a secret service agent for three US presidents. Nowadays, he's a prominent advocate for gun rights. How many guns do you own? Uh, gosh, I always forget. I have about four or five handguns, I have two shotguns, and I have two rifles. A lot of people in Australia would hear that and go, that is dead set bonkers. Yeah. Um, that, well, that's bonkers to not have. That's good. Good for you. I mean, why, why do you need more than one? Um, why do I need? Because it's, it's not, you know, we have a bill of rights. It's not called the bill of needs here. And I don't really feel the need to answer, I mean, anyone, no offense as to what I need. I mean, what, what, you know, why do you need that jacket? You could have certainly got a cheaper one. I mean, Jacket's could, not going to kill anyone, is it? Uh, no, either's my gun because I don't you know, kill people. The Marjorie Stoneman School is um, just down the road from here. Yeah. What do you say to the students there that say that gun control is necessary? Well, gun control is, is a myth. I mean, there's, we've never controlled guns. I, I, I don't it, even... Is now the time? For, for, well, how? I mean, what evidence does anybody have that gun controls worked anywhere? Australia? <laughs> you have no evidence that gun controls worked in Australia. So there I, has not been a single mass shooting since the gun buyback. Okay, so, and I encourage everyone to do all your own homework. There are more guns now in Australia than before the gun confiscation. It doesn't work. The fight for tougher gun laws has an unlikely backer. Convicted school shooter Evan Ramsey is now 21 years into a life sentence and he's had plenty of time to think about what he did. What do you think would have happened if you couldn't have so easily accessed a gun? If I didn't have access to a gun, I wouldn't be doing the prison sentence that I am now. And your principal and Josh would probably still be alive. Probably. How do you feel every time you see another school shooting has happened? A lot of it's uh, sad and sadness and remorse. In the wake of all of these school shootings, there's so much debate about whether there should be tighter gun control in America. Do you think that would make a difference? If children didn't have such easy access to firearms, then yes, this, these types of crimes would not happen.
But of all the arguments for gun control, there's perhaps none more powerful than the raw emotion of a 15-year-old boy weeping for his friend, killed in yet another school shooting. The first time should have been the last time, and it breaks my heart that it took us to hear for us really to realize that something needs to be done. How important is it for you that some sort of change now comes from this tragedy? It, it's extremely important. It means the world to all of us, that we can actually do something. It, people underestimate us because we're high school kids, but no, we have voices and we want to get heard. And we want this to never happen again. We don't want another Sandy Hook. We don't want another Columbine. We don't want another Stoneman Douglas. We don't want it again, ever. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.